Is that how I drink out of you? I don't know. Hello, folks. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie Canada. Yes, indeed. Just like that majestic country. If you enjoy vintage, sewing, thrifting, all with heavy doses of sarcasm, please do click that subscribe button now. In today's video, I am going to be discussing a very heated topic among pattern sellers and lovers. How do you store your patterns? Oh, sure. Now Stephanie does a pattern video. Where's the rest of our pattern tour, Stephanie? I'm sorry, it's coming, I promise. It's on my to-do list. I just haven't. Before we get started, I do want to acknowledge that there are definitely quite a few other pattern storage organizational videos out there, and I will link a few of them down below for you, so if you don't like my way of doing it, you can watch one of theirs and maybe it will speak to you. But first, let's grab our coffees. Is that how I drink out of you? I don't know. Welcome my new mug friend. Yes, I did shatter the horns as soon as I opened the package. Oh well, at least the bottom's safe. Darn it. So the first thing you're going to know is that these are my personal preferences. Now, if you choose to do it in a different way, that is completely up to you and I will not begrudge you even a little, unless you just chuck them in the bottom of boxes and then, well, please don't do that, that damages them. But if you have different ways of storing them, whether or not you use this type of bag or that type of bag or this contraption and all the other ways to do it, I am just sharing with you the tips that have worked for me as a vintage pattern seller for the past 10 years. So take that with what you will. You can use these, you cannot use these. It's up to you. I'm just here to provide the information. So the first thing I do is decide what size pattern I have that I'm dealing with. I know that seems extraordinarily basic, but it's very true. I don't have any patterns. Here we go. Oh God, you're sad. Okay, that's fine. It's fine. So let's take, for example, this kind of sad butter pattern. What you're looking at here is you're looking at the smallest size pattern that I have personally found outside of things like Dewberry and Hollywoods. But as far as your standards, butter and Advanced and Vogue actually are all basically the same envelope size, so they can all basically fit in the exact same thing. Hey! Now once you've decided what pattern you're dealing with, whether it's your small, medium, or large, then you can move on to the sleeve. Now the most important thing to know about the pattern sleeve are two folds. One, why did I just switch fingers? One, are you dealing with a completely shattered pattern? This one's not quite there, but by golly, it's close. And two, is all the components in this envelope and cardboard, if you choose to use that, acid free? I cannot stress enough how important it is to use acid free everything. Beep, 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 beep. Breaking news! This just in. Editing Stephanie here. Upon going deeper into the internet, I realized that there is indeed no such thing as acid-free plastic. There is, however, three types of plastic that are safe for archival use, and they are defined as inert or stable. Number one is going to be archival polyester. Number four, which is polyethylene. And number five, which is polypropylene. These three are perfectly safe to store your precious patterns in, or any other type of vintage paper goods. The one that you should not use is recyclable number three, PVC. While this isn't typically used in any type of archival pattern holding situations, it's better to be prepared than not. This type of plastic can leak gases into your paper and yellow it very quickly. It can be found in such things as photo holders instead. So also don't put your photos in there if you don't want them to yellow. That is all. Let's continue with the video. These are acid-free envelopes. I typically pick mine up, well, this last batch was from Unique Packing on eBay, and I ordered them in what one would say a ridiculous amount. I still have at least 10 to 15 packages of these just sort of sitting around. <laughs> <laughs> and yet I'm out of the uh, large ones, so maybe I did my math wrong. But I buy these in three sizes. I will link them all down below for you. Please know that any of the links that are down below, I am an affiliate to, so I do receive a very small commission, with no extra charge to you, that does help to support me and my channel. However, there's absolutely no pressure, they're just there so that you can have a direct link so you know exactly what to hunt for, and if you choose to use them, great, and if not, no big deal. Thanks so much for understanding, folks. Now, for this size pattern, what you want to do is have a... I use... oh, yeah, yeah, like that. 
I use a five and five eighths by eight and a quarter inch acid acid free sleeve. Say that three times fast. And my adhesive strip for this envelope is actually on the top so it folds over. When I order my next round of these, I'm going to be looking for somewhere the adhesive is down here and the plastic flips up and there's no adhesive up here. Because to get the pattern in and out, you want to use this ideally for long-term storage. Well, when the plastic strip is on the top, if you're not careful, sometimes it catches your pattern. Not good. And that's the size I would use for Advanced, Butterick, and Vogue, as well as Hollywood and DuBerry. Now for one of your larger manufacturers that is still known today, Simplicity. I know this one's torched. <coughs> dusty. <coughs> oh, so dusty. Simplicity. Simplicity does not fit into my smallest one, so I had to order the next size up. So the six by nine envelope will hold most simplicities. Now, this particular case right here, she a little thick. Thick. So this one will not be going in a six by nine. This one will have to go into the next size up so that they don't smush down the edges or possibly damage the envelope more than it already is. And of course we can't leave out McCall's. Yes, I know this one's already in an envelope, just go with me. For this one, I have to use six and a half by nine and a half to give these enough room to make sure that they have enough wiggle space. Now this really only applies to any pattern that is pre-1979. Once you get past 79, all the envelopes get so thick that you really have to try and do a whole other scale if you want to send these envelopes with the patterns anyway. So that's uh, your own judgment. Now you might be wondering, Stephanie, why doesn't your pattern have a cardboard backing on it? Well, here's the thing. The way I store my patterns, I don't really have enough room to do a proper comic book board pattern cover and then behind it set up at this point. And also I do think it's a touch on the ridiculous side, unless your pattern is so shattered that it can't physically stand up to scrutiny anymore or really being touched. And then I absolutely advocate for those, but make sure that you have a special drawer and that you're disclaiming that, or if you're storing it, you store it very carefully because once that acid has fully eaten through your envelope, there's, you can save it. It just takes a lot of work. Now, for some folks I know, the cardboard is an absolute must and that's all more power to you. It's just not how I prefer to do mine. Now, once your pattern is safely tucked away inside the envelope, how do I store it from there? Well, for me, it's a mixture of about three different areas. I am lucky enough to have a very large simplicity cabinet from the 1980s. While it's not a deal for large scale patterns such as Vogue Couturier's and the oversized Vogue that you'd see in the 60s and 70s or the Paris originals, it is ideal for everything else pretty much. Well, okay, not McCall's, but that's neither here nor there. Let's be real. It was designed for simplicity patterns and that's what it's best at, but I've made do with everything else going into the same thing so that I don't have to pull up my hair, trying to find every single pattern around my house. Now this pattern cabinet holds a majority of the patterns that I sell. However, it doesn't fit all of them. So what I have here, is a two drawer filing cabinet of which the bottom drawer is the only one that I use for any type of pattern storage. This is where I'm gonna store the oversized patterns, such as Vogue Paris Original, Vogue Couturier, the, just the general Vogue Americanas, and anything that is so large that it doesn't fit into anywhere else. I'm looking at you past patterns. My goodness, you're so gigantic. And that's where all of those live. Now, McCall's are a certain extra special beast they're sort of split up in my house. The top drawer of my 1980s Simplicity cabinet holds a primarily anything McCall. Ooh, that's right, before there was an S. However, because I have such a large amount of McCall's, zzz, 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 I had to commandeer one of the bottom drawers of my fabric pattern cabinet, which is actually directly behind where the camera is. And even that isn't enough room, so I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to store the rest of these things because, oh my goodness, they're everywhere now. And what this allows me to do with any of these drawer setups is I'm actually either setting them on their bottoms or on their sides inside their nice plastic envelopes because when you are actually using your pattern cabinet, you wanna find a nice balance of full enough and not so full that it's flopping around and damaging it more 
and squeezed in like sardines and therefore doing extra damage because it's now packed too tightly. What the heck was I saying? Uh, organization, yes. Now, one thing you really do want to make sure that while you're using all of your storage capacities to their best, you also want to make sure that there's an organizational system to go along with it. You don't just want to toss them in there haphazardly. What I do for now is I just start mine from zero and go on up until you get to the letters and numbers and then you rotate through. And of course, all of my companies go in alphabetical order down through my drawers. Now everyone has different ways of doing it. Some people prefer by era, some people prefer by company, some people prefer company and era and style. I'm not there yet. Maybe eventually I will be, but I'm not there yet. So just remember that while you're going through your storage journey, you also want to really focus on your organizational as well. If this is something you want me to dive deeper into, I am happy to do that. Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please do click that like button. Being sure to comment and tell me how you do it differently, or do you do the exact same thing that I do? I just love to hear from y'all. Making sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss more pattern and other fun, sarcastic -y comments along the way. And turn on the bell for post notifications because why not? Thanks so much for watching, folks. See y'all next time. First, we're gonna start with a little bit of story time. No, we're gonna check and make sure it's recording. Yeah, okay. I have been selling patterns for about 10 years now. And, well, it's not always the most lucrative business. But before we get into the large scale, how to, oh God, phone. Stop it. Being clumsy since forever. Let's, let's not. Okay. This is going well. Anyway, moving on. Why did it just get so dark in here? Okay, hold please. Uh, it's not great, but it'll help. I don't know what to do. It sounded so good in my head earlier and then just came out like that.